Nebesilerin yeri aynı. Şimdi bunun etrafı komple çevrilmiş ha. Divarla çevrilmiş ha. Kayonu Mound or Kayonu Hill is a mound located in the northwest of Diyarbakir city center, 7 km southwest of Ergani district. This is considered to be one of the first places in Western Asia to switch from wild grain harvesting to plant food production. Kayonu where more extensive excavations were carried out than most of the known Neolithic settlements, presents the transition from a settled hunter-gatherer to an agricultural and animal-rearing society as an uninterrupted sequence. This is considered to be, the first settlement where the transition from completely wild plant and animal species to their domesticated species can be traced. This place was a village of 600 people, judging by the number of its buildings. Kaonu was discovered in 1963 during the prehistoric research in southeastern Anatolia, survey conducted by Istanbul University and the University of Chicago. Excavations were started in 1964 under the direction of Hallett Campbell and Robert Braidwood. Excavations have been carried out under the direction of Mehmet Özdegen since 1968. The excavation project was carried out with the contributions of the German Karlsruhe Architecture Institute between 1977 and 1978, and the University of Rome in 1989-1991. It is accepted that there was an uninterrupted settlement on the hill from the pre-pottery Neolithic age to the Middle Ages. Considering their rectangular shape and stone foundation, it is seen as one of the first examples of full settlement in the soil. The fact that their foundations are in a grid plan constitutes the characteristic of Kaonu structures. Grid foundations made of stone are interpreted as a product of the purpose of protecting rooms against humidity and cold by raising them from the ground and insulating them. The absence of pots herds led the authors to place the Kaonu culture in the pre-pottery phase of the Neolithic. However, it is not placed in the first phase of pre-pottery Neolithic culture, but in the more advanced second phase. The animals hunted here are considered to be wild boar, red deer, fallow deer, wild cattle, wild sheep and wild goat. Wild lentils and vetch form the basis of the collected plants.
while hunter-gatherer subsistence continued in the grid plane structures and channeled structures phases of the pottery Neolithic B phase, wild emma and acorn wheat began to appear in the grid plan structures phase. Looking at the remains here, it is understood that hunting and gathering did not disappear completely. We will visit the Diyarbakir Archaeology Museum to see the artifacts unearthed during the excavations here. We will publish that visit as a continuation of this documentary. The presence of a large room called a temple was found in the upper layers of this excavation area. It is thought that the people living here may have some kind of fertility cult beliefs. While the dead were buried as a whole in the previous layers, the fact that only the skulls of 46 were encountered in the burials in the later layers perhaps tells us something. The disembodied skulls evoke the practice of the skull cult found in the Jericho Neolithic in Palestine. Female sculptures and skull burials must be indicators of a belief at the level of mother and ancestor cults. It is understood that the settlement was a village settlement with a population of 600 during the Neolithic age, to an unexpected extent. Average lifespan is estimated to be 29 to 30 years. However, it was determined that five individuals died over the age of 50. Four of them were male, the sex of the fifth could not be determined. Average height is 1.70 for males and 1.57 for females. Their head structure shows that they are from the Mediterranean race. In this period, 34% of the population is seen to be infants and children. It has been determined that child deaths are mostly between the ages of 2 and 3 years. It is understood from the examination of the bones that various diseases were experienced. The main ones are ear and bone inflammation, joint disorders, dental caries. In particular, 
osteoarthritis seems to be strikingly common. On the other hand, severe tooth wear is observed. It is accepted that this situation arises from the crumbling of the basalt grinding stones used in grain milling and the very small pieces mixed into the flour. In addition, there are fractures in the head, arm and leg bones, probably as a result of accidents encountered during hunting. It is seen that these fractures are healed with a deliberate wrapping. Nine adults appear to have recovered from skull injuries. The most astonishing find in the study of human bones is the skull of an adult young male, 8 mm from the parietal bone. It is an operation to cut and remove a piece of bone in diameter. There is no reaction or healing trace around the hole formed by this operation, which is called trepanation in the medical language. It is therefore thought that this man died during the operation, or was already dead. The Keonu excavations and subsequent studies provided important information, above all, in terms of following the development of the same culture over time. At least all phases of the pre-pottery Neolithic age, which lasted approximately 2,500 to 3,000 years, are observed without interruption. On this development line of the Keonu society, as well as the social structure, the nutrition strategy can be followed. In addition to all this, Keonu is a research area where the Neolithic revolution is exhibited in full.
kelebeçilerin şeyi var. Orada da geçen diğer taraf hep gözüküyor. Bunları getirdi orada oturuyorlar. Oyun oyuna ilerdi. Şu anda gençler kimse gelmiyor. Kamburluk şeyi yani benziyor. Burası çoktan yani devur dayım olmuş ha. Açsan da pişman, açmayan da pişmez. Burada bir mıgara, büyük mıgara var. Bu alkolü falan gitti, açmadılar. Geri sözlerse köyler vermez, oradaki köyler izin vermediler. Bir şeyleri var. Yani eskide bir koli vardı ya. Dereye kadar gidiyor. Diğer tarafta aynısı şeklinde yani komple etrafı çevriliydi ha. <gülüyor> <gülüyor> 